All right, it's been a long time since we've done one of these. I think we left off the cut content re um, after the OVA, and we didn't even get to Season 2 content. I want to be able to cover this so that maybe it's going to help me with Season 3 content. But hey, let's get more ReZero web novel cut content. Episode 1. Here we go. Very important mandatory. Lei, which is Lai, right? And Regulus versus Rem is an anime-exclusive fight scene. All right. This is not really that cut content, but Lei Regulus vs. Rem fight displayed in the anime is anime exclusive. However, there is one aspect to that fight that breaks canon with the later reveal. I think there was some other stuff in the anime's cut content that said Rem never even like fought them, right? And Rem, Rem vs. Lai didn't really even happen. I forget exactly what it was all about. Wilhelm's meaningful injury. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is fucking crazy shit, right? After meeting at the parlor, Wilhelm reveals to Subaru that a wound of his is bleeding. This is the blessing of the Grim Reaper stint, right? A wound made to bleed by the power of the divine protection of the Death God, once held by his wife. She cut him. Teresia cut Wilhelm? And if you're like nearby the person that cut you, the wound opens up, right? whose influence grows stronger as the distance between the injured person and the wielder diminishes. This is a ranged thing. The closer you are to the person with that divine protection or blessing of the Grim Reaper, the more your wound will start bleeding. But Teresia is quote-unquote dead. But nothing in ReZero can ever be completely just taken for face value. She could be easily alive. And the most important, easiest way to do it is just, you know, whenever we have a question, we just default to... Pandora. If we assume that Teresia indeed does have the divine protection of Bless uh, Grim Reaper right now still, and she's somehow alive, how could she be alive? But I thought Reinhardt killed Teresia. Something bad happened in the whale subjugation. Something happened to Teresia, right? I'm assuming and that's why Reinhardt had to kill Teresia. It would be really nice to know who really was at the event of the first whale, a white whale subjugation. But this is more seemingly like Somehow, Teresia got possessed by the evil voodoo shit, I don't know, and Reinhardt was sent to kill her. But she's not dead. Default to Pandora. Always just default to Pandora and it'll just make sense. So, either that or someone else has a divine protection or blessing of the Grim Reaper. And this is the part where it gets a little confusing because I don't know the mechanics of how blessings or divine protections are given. It seems RNG. Is there like a... Is it passed down from generations? The Source Saint blessing seems to just kind of go to Reinhardt, right? And it was at Teresia. It didn't go to Heinkel. It went to Reinhardt. It, it, it's... I don't have enough, like, understanding of how this shit is passed down on. But a very funny meme that I was working on is that... <laughs> maybe Teresia really is dead. And Lai Bike Batenkaitos actually is Teresia's kid. Because Wilhelm was a terrible husband. That's why... It, it's a stupid fucking theory. It's an incredibly stupid theory, but hey, let's be mindful that, you know, Willem has his injury, and the person with that divine protection is around now. Episode 2, 27 over, okay. The Pyroxene Crystal does not exist in the web novel. A very important mandatory. What the hell is that? The Pyroxene Crystal does not exist in the web novel, so neither Garfield nor Frederica have a crystal. <laughs> But that's just an important part, but that's why the web novel is draft, right? This is like a very important crystal that's basically just like, you know, a, a given like gift from the mom, right? Episode 3. A kid in the states that Subaru's actions are out of schedule, relatively important. Out of schedule? So the order of operations? A kid that mentions that Subaru seems to have leapt quite a bit ahead of schedule. Oh, okay. And that he should be aware of far more about herself, the tomb, and the sanctuary. He is ahead of schedule. Why? Someone else is intervening? Is it Roswell? But Roswell's grimoire is being given instruction from Echidna through her authority of greed, the Tomb of Wisdom, right? But Echidna is aware of where Subaru should be at this current point of time, but he's ahead of schedule because... I don't know. I'm sure her Tomb of Wisdom is telling her stuff like that. I'm sure she knows She knows that she, he has like returned by death. And because of that knowledge, he's able to just, like, learn and be better and get faster. I'm not so sure about this one. Subaru asks Echidna about the Sin Archbishops. Subaru actually asks Echidna about the witch cult Sin Archbishops, to which Echidna replies that she is not aware of the term. 
because Echidna knows nothing about the outside world since she died 400 years ago. She's been sealed away. She doesn't even know the existence of the Archbishops. However, her Tomb of Wisdom, her authority, it may seem contradictory, but she is aware of some things because of her authority. Subaru then concludes that since Echidna does not know about them, then she would not know how to save Rem. But it's just as easy as... Well, I'm assuming that it's going to be just as easy as just killing Gluttony Archbishop. And if it's not that easy, maybe taking his Witch Factor and using your own authority, which could give back the name and memories. I'm not too sure. Echidna was sealed at Volcanica's command. And Volcanica is the divine dragon that has the covenant with the Lugunican family that's supposedly resting beyond the Great Waterfall. In terms of the Great Waterfall, you know how basically Isekai characters are referred to as being from beyond the Great Waterfall? Al, for example, Subaru Hoshin of the Wilderness and so on. But if we're supposed to assume that phrase to be from another world, does that mean Sekhmet actually sent the Volcanica, the Divine Dragon, to a different dimension, a world entirely? Because, like, are we talking about, like, what, what, what does the Beyond the Great Waterfall really mean, right? It's a simple phrase that may allude to a different world, but we know that the world is flat and is bordered by the Great Waterfall. Is the dragon literally at the bottom of the waterfall? Or is the dragon pushed to a different world entirely based on that one phrase interpretation? Who knows? But this is commanded by the Mathers to oppose the Witch of Envy. Echidna was sealed to oppose the Witch of Envy. Hmm. How does that make any sense? Echidna was actively helping the Witch of Envy? And Volcanica was needed? I'm not sure. Echidna details that she was sealed by the Mather's magic at Volcanica's instruction. The dragon gave the instructions, okay? In a faint hope that together with the Divine Dragon, the Source Saint, and the Sage, right? The three key pieces that was needed to seal Satala, the Witch of Envy. The Witch of Envy could be opposed. The original intention, however, was to seal Sekhmet, the Witch of Sloth. That plan was scrapped by Volcanica as Sekhmet beat him to a pulp. That is crazy. Sekhmet is truly one of the strongest beings, but not as strong as Regulus, apparently. Volcanica is scared of Sekhmet. Sekhmet bodied the dragon. The original intention was to seal Sekhmet, but it ended up being Echidna. But what the fuck does that really mean? Why? How does this help? She was sealed in a faint hope that together with... Yeah, the Witch of Envy could be opposed. Am I misreading this? How does this make any sense? Why was she sealed by Volcanica's instruction? Because in a faint hope that together with these pieces that they could be... But how does Echidna being sealed work with this seal? It's skipping some information, right? That's why... They're, like, I'm reading this, but the comprehension doesn't make sense. But I think they're intentionally leaving out a key detail. They're intentionally mis like leaving out a key detail in exactly how Echidna was useful to the Witch of Envy at that point, but... Alright, next. Echidna implies that a deeper connection between her and Puck. Well, we know that Frozen Bond, Puck and Echidna has an oath. No excessive interference or memory gets wiped. Subaru mentions that he had previously heard Echidna's name from Puck. Really? See Season 1, Episode 18, Episode 23 cut content. And also that Echidna's speaking style is similar to Puck's. Really? As an example, both use the same pronouns, Boku. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> One pronoun and suddenly, oh yeah, everyone that uses Boku is now Echidna? Echidna replies with laughter, pointing out that it's only natural, as she would be the only one who Puck would take as a role model. Let's read that again. As she would be the only one who Puck would take as a role model. Puck worships Echidna to such a degree that Puck would see Echidna as a role model? That's interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm assuming that Echidna made Puck as well, like how Echidna made Bieko. But the really frustrating thing is how Puck is absent in the Season 2 flashbacks when Rizu, Bieko, Roswell were hanging out with Echidna. Puck never existed back then. And another really frustrating thing is how I interpreted when Puck found Amelia, right, in the beginning of Frozen Bond, basically after what happened with Pandora, right, by the seal, Amelia froze herself. I thought that Puck 
had a role to play during those times in the Aelior Forest. And because of his excessive interference, the oath states that there's a punishment. You will forget your memories. You'll forget to even remember what you, what you, what, why you even exist. And that's why when he found Amelia at the beginning of Frozen Dawn, he's saying, I'm so sorry that it took me this long to find you. But it doesn't seem that way at all now, right? Puck was never really present in any of those times. And now those lines that Puck said about, I'm so sorry it took me this long to find you, rather than it being interpreted as Puck lost the memories and finally got them back and found Amelia, it's something else entirely. Puck is a very interesting, confusing person. Episode 6. One of Roswell's ancestors was acquainted with Wilhelm. Oh, okay. <laughs> which which ancestor was it? Was it the A to L Mathers, or is this like someone before Roswell A Mathers? When the conversation steers onto the topic of the White Wall subjugation, Roswell inquires Super about Wilhelm. Oh, that's right. This is the meetings when Roswell and Super were talking, and Roswell talked about what happened. Was, Wil was Wilhelm the one that killed the whale or some shit? I, I think Subaru mentioned something like that, and Roswell kind of like was pissed off. As Subaru praises his role in taking down the whale, Roswell is subtly delighted and explains that although he has never met the sword demon Wilhelm, one of his ancestors was briefly acquainted with Wilhelm. And if it's an ancestor that's briefly acquainted with Wilhelm, we can obviously assume that it's definitely one of Roswell letter dot Mathers because Wilhelm is not a thousand years old. He's probably like, you know, 70, 80, 60, who knows? So maybe like a previous generation of the one before knew of Wilhelm. Or maybe it's uh, Robert Julia, yeah, J. Mathers, Julia. Because uh, uh, Sword Demon and the so uh, Sword Saint, Teresa, were important during the Demi War race, uh, the, the war. And Roswell apparently was taught martial arts in, the, in that term. That, that was the one, J. Mathers was the one that could not use magic at all. And that's when he learned all of the martial arts. It's also told that the ninjas taught him, most likely from Valakia, but maybe the sword demon also taught Roswell some martial arts? I'm not really sure, but the acquaintance probably has to do with, you know, the sword demon's prominence during that era, during Lugunica. Episode 7. Subaru is not killed by Elsa, and is instead teleported somewhere else by Biko. Relatively important. Okay. After unintentionally entering the Forbidden Library and learning about Biko's gospel, she ejects him into an unknown room via door crossing. A putrid smell <laughs> permeates that room, and scattered all around are broken tables and instruments, some with pattern-like magic circles on the surface and deactivated magic crystals. In the center of the room is a large, seemingly bottomless hole from which the smell is coming. Ew. Is this Biko's toilet? How does he poop? Do spirits poop? I don't know. Some of the broken tables are noted to have been destroyed recently. Exiting this area, Subaru finds himself in a sanctuary, however, no one is there. Shortly afterwards, something opens a gaping hole in his torso, and Subaru dies with the sound of chewing, uh, which is the bunnies. Uh, what the fuck is this putrid smell? What's in that bottomless hole, bro? Is this Biko's bathroom? But it's like exiting the room, he finds himself in the sanctuary. But that could still be a different plane of dimension, and opening a door leads into the sanctuary. I'm not sure. What a random one, though. All right, episode nine. Echidna was enshrined at Volcanica's command. Redux, not really important. Echidna states that the reason why she's still active is because her deceased soul was sealed by Volcanica's will. Henceforth, her body died, but her soul did not. Given the low importance because this is information already given in their earlier cut content. True. Episode 10. The Ryuzu Crystal room is where Subaru was teleported to earlier and is different earlier in the timeline. Okay. Following his own memory, Subaru arrives at the place Biko had teleported him to. There he finds that neither the building nor its interior are as destroyed as they were on the second loop. Furthermore, the Ryuzu Mayor Crystal is in the exact place the bottomless hole was in the second loop. Bottomless hole. The putrid smell. This is kind of interesting. What? What's going on in there? What's, what's in that fucking bottomless hole? The immortality experiment's failure produced a powerful Ruzu copy that was disposed of by an ancestor of Roswell. Holy shit. So, R Roswell, a different Nathers, killed this failed experiment? When explaining the Ruzu replicas and the immortality experiment performed by Echidna, Ruzu mentions that there was a first clone 
into which a kidney attempted to insert into our souls, right? But it failed because the compression of data. There's just too much information to, you know, put it into the Ryuzu clones. The kidna didn't think about the whole compression mechanic just yet. It failed as the vessel of Ryuzu Mayor was insufficient to accept the Witch of Greed. And as such, a terrible failure with a bankrupt personality. <laughs> bankrupt personality? In a part of a kidna's power is born. It sounds like this Ryuzu is an absolute fucking menace. It was disposed of eventually, albeit not without causing anguish to Lady Roswell, Jay Mathers, the head of the family some generations past. Huh. I would love to see a side story with this failed Ryuzu. It's like, um... You guys remember that one episode of uh, Spongebob? Where it's like a really scary episode where Doodle Bob was created. Right? Spongebob finds like a pencil and he's like you know, drawing shit and like, you know... Things come to life and it's all fun until they accidentally create Doodle Bob. That's what I'm thinking of when I hear bankrupt personality. Like Echidna basically created like Doodle fucking Echidna Ryuzu and it's just an absolute fucking menace. And Julia had to like, I don't know, impale it with those martial arts. Episode 12. Subaru quite literally rises from the dead in a failed loop's continuation. What? In the first scene of Subaru's second trial, killing himself because of Rem having been gluttonied. After the final line of the scene in the light novel and anime, Subaru's dead body rises once again. Huh. Moving in a weird manner, much like that of a mechanical doll. After Wilhelm reacts and goes to strike it, a cascade of shadows defends Subaru's body. What? Is this the Witch of Envy trying to protect Subaru's body right now? What's going on? After which Puck appears pointing out the culprit as A slash the witch likely the Witch of Envy. The scene ends with the clash between Puck and Subaru's dead body. Huh. So in that run, the Witch of Envy doesn't really give up just yet. And, you know, kind of possesses Subaru's body and all these shadows show up. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. If Puck does not destroy the world, that girl cannot be saved. That's so fucking troll that you say that girl because intuitively you would think Amelia, but knowing ReZero probably isn't. In Subaru's second trial scene where Puck faces Reinhardt, after Puck explains his motivation for attempting to destroy the world, Reinhardt inquires as to confirm it, and Puck replies that if he does not do it, that girl cannot be saved, whether this means Amelia or someone else is unclear. Again, so stupidly troll, where everything would point towards it being Amelia, but why would Puck, you know, already go crazy like that? Amelia's dead. Whenever Puck is out and just everything is, you know, Puck is trying to destroy the world, Amelia is already dead. So that girl cannot be saved. I don't know. If Puck doesn't do this... Would people blame Amelia for the aftermath? Like, like, like one way to try to theorize on how this makes sense is if people would assume that Amelia is responsible for all the crazy ice. And Reinhardt killing Puck is a way to kind of offload that this non-existent like guilt onto Puck. And rather than Amelia being seen as the monster, Puck is seen as the monster. And even if Amelia is dead, the people would recognize that it was not Amelia and she would not be demonized in her death. That's one way you could do mental gymnastics. But more likely, it's a different girl entirely. It's probably fucking... <laughs> it's probably Satala somehow. I don't know, man. That girl, so troll. So troll. Next. It could be the um, Puck forcing return by death. And it, it does kind of seem like... I mean, it, it, by that time, like... I, I guess, like... In Frozen Bot, it made me think that Puck wanted to destroy the world after Amelia dies because of the amount of prejudice and hate Amelia gets. And by then, I kind of was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck this world too, but... If Puck is aware of Return by Death, then it kind of seems like he does, right? There's this weird shit going on in Season 1 as well. It may seem like Puck is trying to force a Return by Death. That could definitely make sense. Or it could be something else entirely. Who knows with the fucking show like this. Next up, Puck and Amelia's contract breaks. Puck's memories return. And Puck implies that he used to be a humanoid previously. Of course he is. Puck's identity is very interesting, right? Are people... What was the other theories that we were making in Season 2? Other than Minerva is Puck's, uh, Amelia's mom. Well, Puck has to be, uh, if, if Minerva is the mom, then, you know, Puck must be an elf, right? A human, like, an elf. Because the father must be an elf. 
and the mom must be a human that for therefore a half elf can be made if we're going to go with minerva as amelia's the mom the post well battle cup loop is further explored in subaru's second trial puck's memories seem to return with the implication the contract mentioned in frozen bond was tied to echidna right the punishment stuff Having met Betrugius in one particular line, his pronoun switches from the usual Boku to Ore. So troll, the subtle things, Japanese pronouns, if you're not like a native or like you're super weeb, then you would never see this coming. Which usually means is, is meaningful. He also seems rueful at Kidna, but the reason is not given. What does this mean? Is this like a negative? Sorrow or regrets? Pitiful. Regret or sorrow? Puck pities Echidna, but the reason is not given, and now it kind of feels like that girl. Plus the fact that Puck seems to hold Echidna in such a high regard as a role model. You never know, that girl could be Echidna! Having broken out of the crystal, his contract with Amelia is severed. And once Biaku ass assists with Puck's request to protect Amelia, he faces Betrugus alone. After some quips, Betrugus mentions that for a spirit, Puck is quite human-like in demeanor, to which Puck replies that his, despite his appearance, his limbs used to be longer and his face more handsome. Wonder who he is, but Puck being an elf dad is something I can definitely get behind. Some people think that Puck is actually Archie, which is kind of crazy. Episode 13. Satala and the Witch of Envy are not exactly the same thing. Oh, we know that, right? It's a personality difference due to the incompatibility of the witch factors. Satala and the Witch of Envy are two separate entities. A personality that arose when Satala, being incompatible with them, took up the witch factor. And so fucking troll here, how you refer to as them, but took up the witch envy factor. So does that mean like, so now you're telling me specifically it's the envy witch factor. It's not like when she consumed quote unquote the other witches that she turned into the Witch of Envy. I thought that the compatibility issue was taking on like every different type of authorities as, you know, a kid, uh, Satala, sorry, Satala consumed like the souls of them, but no. It's the Envy Witch factor that she's not compatible with. It is explicitly stated that all the witches except Echidna only hate the Witch of Envy and like Satala. All the witches except Echidna. Yeah. And uh, I think Tifon really loves Satala. And that's why they're like, yo, in, in season two, the tea party, there was like a moment of people trying to figure out, are, are you Satala right now or are you Witch of Envy, right? And Echidna hates both of them. Echidna is the sole exception, hating both Satala and the Witch of Envy. Why does she do that? I don't know. That's some endgame stuff. We also know that, you know, Echidna really hates Amelia because like, Amelia is Satala. I don't fucking know. The Witch of Envy is bad, but Satala was the one who did the bad things. Really? There is a couple extra details about Satala Sach Witch of Envy split personality affair. First, Echidna states that the Witch Factor was forcibly inserted into Satala. Forcibly. Satala didn't want it, someone gave it to her, who is not compatible, which led to the Witch of Envy's persona, uh, personas and peers. Second, although the Witch is like Satala and hate the witches like Satala and hate the Witch of Envy. It was Satala personality that killed the witches and consumed half the world. Oh. See, I thought that like, so my theory for why the Witch of Envy did this shit, but we are supposed to feel sorry for Satala was because once I heard the split personality stuff, I was like, okay, the Witch of Envy persona must be the crazy bitch that destroyed half the world after consuming all the different witches and went crazy. Why did she do that? Because maybe the world is something fucked up to her lover who was someone that resembles Subaru or was actually Subaru or some sort of pre-reincarnation Subaru. Therefore, she did this shit out of envy and just like, I don't know, anger. But no, it's actually Satala that did it. Why? Why would Satala herself do it? There must be some tragic reason. There mu Or it's just a lie. <laughs> that's, that's another thing too, right? Or it's just a fucking lie, right? And... I don't know. It's it's just the more answers you get, the more questions you get, and nothing should ever be taken for face value. E everything could be a misdirection, but Satala is the one that destroyed everything and consumed half the world. And I still have be just just because of this single statement, 
<laughs> I'm always so down to believe that the world, the uh, ReZero world was not a flat world until this event happened. That's just my stupid theory. Subaru is a sage candidate. Damn right. Daphne dubs Subaru as a sage candidate. The significance of this of this un is unknown. Well, what do we know? Similarities. Well, well, why would one be a sage? What do we even know about a sage? Well, we know about the great sage Flugel. But that's not necessarily the sage that sealed away Volcanica, but it definitely could be. But knowing a show like this that's so troll, it could definitely not be. A sage or a wise man is very, you know, wise. Subaru has forbidden knowledge because he, you know, fucking returns by death and knows exactly what's going to happen. So it's easy for him to kind of predict shit. Is that why the people... And like, who dubs them as sage candidate? Daphne does? Specifically, a witch of gluttony can dubs... Like, a, like a witch can give a title like that? Are other people aware of what a sage candidate even means? How does one become a sage? You're a candidate right now, right? In Tower of God, there's like slayer candidates and actual slayers, but... Subaru, the sage candidate. Another interesting thing is how... Like, thematically... Maybe Subaru is like the flugel of this era. Because, well, flugel apparently is also an isekai character. Flugel was here, was written in Japanese on that tree. Flugel planted, right? That tree is also chopped, not chopped down, but blown up as we subjugate the white whale. And it's a beautiful scene as we see, you know, it's, it's like the sun's rising and Amelia, lap pillow, Subaru. And I'm like, what could be really the meaning of this? I feel like there's such an important imagery of symbolism happening as we see Subaru here with like, you know, the tree being cut down. But... You know, it, it could maybe mean that Subaru is this generation's, like, flugel, a sage. I'm not sure. Let's see. Subaru should only uh, already be aware that Satala does not equal Witch of Envy. Does he? Daphne also implies that because of his status as a sage candidate, he should be already aware of the Satala and the Witch of Envy are different things situation. I don't know if he's aware. But... He does seem to recognize a difference in the Witch of Envy. Like, like, here's what I think is the Witch of Envy and who I think is Satala. You know that episode when we were basically phone turned off, partying with a kid and cheating on Satala and we come out and everything is just like, you know, rising with shadow and she shows up and Garfield saves us. And the Witch of Envy is like chasing after us. I think that is actually Witch of Envy. But. But. And yes, if Flugel knew that Subaru, could, that would be some giga, that, that would be some insane, you know, uh, wise man shit if he predicted that Subaru would subjugate the white whale in the future using his tree. That would be some insane <laughs> wisdom. That's not even wisdom at that point. You're just fucking cheating reading into the future. But I think that is the Witch of Envy. But the one that we see when the Witch of Envy consumes us and we're in this like shadow garden, different realm where Echidna's interference with Petra's handkerchief is actually the thing that saves us. That Satala, the one that's crying, that's making us feel like, oh, I feel kind of bad for you. I feel like that's definitely Satala. And maybe Subaru can make the distinction between the one that's crying and the crazy one that's just, you know, dancing around with the fucking shadow arms. Flugel sealed a pact with Volcanica. Echidna speaks of Flugel sealing a pact with Volcanica. Without which read the first swordsman, the first sword saint, right? The hero of mention in terms of hero sage and uh, wise man, uh, sorry, dragon. Reed would not have been able to stop the Witch of Envy by themselves. What does that mean though, to seal a pact? How do you seal a pact? <laughs> it, this is reminding me of... Remember Roswell? Remember a season finale? Roswell has like an oath bound by a curse? They're they're layering this shit, you know? I, I forget the exact wording, but Roswell shit is like an oath sealed by a curse? I, I forget exactly what the fuck that was. But uh okay, Flugel did something. Pact seal, Volcanica. And this is how Reed was able to stop the Witch of Envy. I don't know. Reed was the most important one to do it? Would him not have been able to stop the Witch of Envy by themselves? Okay. I don't know. This is confusing. This, this is fucking confusing. No one gets Twitch fought. Minerva has a connection with the elves. And we know from the newest cut content that Minerva apparently died 
by the elves, right? It is implied that Minerva lent aid to a group of elves in a location called the Boroid Plains. The significance of it is unknown. This is very interesting because she apparently died, right? Was, was she skewered? I forget. But Minerva died by elves and that's just, what? Why? Why would that ever happen? It makes me kind of think like the association with Minerva being Emilia's mom potentially. The dad most likely being an elf, right? It has to be an elf if we assume Minerva is the human that was the mom. Something fell out. Maybe the elves thought that Minerva betrayed the dad or Amelia, who knows. The manner of death of which of the witches is given. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. This shit's super important. Minerva died of insanity. Minerva died of insanity. In <laughs> you mean instantly in a trap? Jesus Christ, what the fuck are you trying to tell me? Minerva died instantly in a trap. Carmilla perished in a sea of flames. Daphne wasted to death amid an ocean of sand. I will never pronounce her name Typhon. Typhon. Drowned in a flood and that's why it's so important, right? Remember. Remember. Oh, she went insane in a trap? Okay, okay. That makes more sense. No, this actually does make sense then. Minerva died of insanity in a trap. How is she going insane in a tr she, she died of insanity? Okay, sure. Tifon drowned in a flood, and that's the Pristilla thing, right? That is the Pristilla thing where they're trying to find the remains of a witch, and it's pretty much confirmed now that it is Tifon. Sekhmet fell down the Great Waterfall as she rained destruction upon a dragon. This is when, you know, Sekhmet pushed the Great Dragon beyond the Waterfall of Volcanica. But she fell down the Great Water. She died of fall damage. She's like, oh! She, she literally died of fall damage. That's. What? Echidna collected their souls? That's right. Remaining bound to the present world by the soul alone. Yes, and Echidna basically just did the most clutch thing. And even though each vessel are just completely gone or some remains may remain, the souls are collected in like this crystal thing that was just hanging out in the sanctuary. That's the craziest shit, right? Because in Project Omega, when Echid Echidna executes her plan and she is out in Ryuzushima's body, she casually just goes up to a crystal in the sanctuary and that's where all the witches' souls were in. Except Satala, right? The other witches, bro. They were just, it was all there. Like, that's the crazy shit. In season two, the fact that all the witches' soul was just there. It was just out in plain sight and no one fucking knew. And she just yoinks it and now she goes on a separate journey. And I think that the insanity in a trap may allude to, you know, the... Betrayal of the elves or something, right? Because Minerva, I think, you know, there's some connection with the elves, but maybe she felt like she got betrayed and this is so fucked up. Maybe that's why she's so super mad. I don't know. Echidna guided Subaru towards rejecting her offer intentionally as her preferred outcome. What? This is cope. This is cope. What? Are you telling me right now that Echidna actually didn't get cooked. She planned for everything to happen. There's no way. Minerva blatantly calls out Echidna for guiding swords of the rejecting her offer, to which Echidna replies that she'll be glad with either result. However, Daphne too calls her out saying that Echidna has no qualms in manipulating things to her desired outcome. Well, yeah, because she's a witch. Why would she have any qualms about that? And despite being glad with either, that she had a preferred result. Okay, Daphne is calling her out. Echidna is like saying, nah, either outcome, I'm fine with it. It's not a big deal. I'm not saddened. I'm not cucked. And Daphne's like, cope. Mm -mm. I know you're as one of the fucking if greed route. Don't fucking lie to me. All right. Subaru realizes that he was the first one to not believe in Amelia's ability to pass the try. <sighs> I mean, have you seen the first half of season two did anyone fucking believe in her bro she was cooked of course Subaru had no belief because like every time we repeat Amelia failed again of course he wouldn't fucking believe there was a short talk between Amelia and Subaru after the latter has gotten his qualifications revoked by Echidna and it Subaru attempts once again to be straightforward and reveals his intentions to shield Amelia from the pain by taking the trial in her stead in their stead but Amelia rejected wholly, arguing that she too needs to do something rather than to have Subaru do everything in her stead. True. 
making Subaru realize that he had been the first person to not believe in her ability to pass the trial. <laughs> wah, wah. But hey, she got it figured out at the end, and that's all that matters. Remember, it's not the beginning, it's not the middle, it's about how it ends. And I think that we will end this cut content here. There's still episode 16, you know, there's still this much. I think in another video, we'll be able to cover everything, and by then, maybe I'll be, you know, more ready for the season 3 content. Honestly, this kind of stuff here, right? If I knew ahead of time exactly about how the witches actually died, then uh, I would be able to theorize more about, you know, who could have been the witches' remains. And here's a different thing before we end the video. Satolo consumed the other witches. Yet, here we see that they all died differently. Is someone lying? Or can both be true? At the end of the day, ReZero is just all full of mysteries and subtleties and just layers of assumptions and trolling. And even if it seems like everyone died in different instances, this is probably still associated some way with Satella. Something about her, maybe this is indirectly done, right? Maybe due to the actions of Satella or the Witch of Envy, right? Everyone else also died and you could blame it on Satella like that. I'm not completely sure, but hey, I'll see you next time.